Well, in the end, it was a huge victory for Leslie Williams. On March 26, a swing of more than 30% gave her a dominating win over the then-sitting member, Independent Peter Besling. Leslie, a formal congratulations. Thank you, Tim, and uh, thanks for having me back in the studio. I was just saying how fresh-faced you look for somebody <laughs> who has hit the ground running since March 26. Um, has your life changed much since that night? It's certainly been extremely busy, and uh, but, you know, an exciting time. I'm really, really looking forward to the challenges ahead. And, uh, yeah, as I said, there, there's lots to do, but um, I, I'm going to be hitting the ground running. You're probably having to pull yourself back and just <laughs> prioritise. Making a list would probably be a good place to start. <laughs> Tell us about that night, though, on March 26. I'm interested to know where were you when those results started to roll in and tell me, tell us how the night unfolded for you. Well, I mean, first of all, obviously, uh, I had spent most of the day going around to the uh, each of the polling booths, starting down at Harrington in the morning uh, with my husband, Don, and, you know, really taking the opportunity uh, to thank those people, those hundreds of volunteers, literally, that were working on the polling booths across the electorate. And uh, uh, we, uh, we met with all of our uh, volunteers at Westport Club and, uh, you know, used uh, the time while the, the tallies were coming in just really to, uh, you know, come together as a group. And, uh, you know, I think they deserved a pat on the back no matter what happened. And uh, obviously we didn't, couldn't predict the outcome, but we had already made plans to, to be together then. Are you, like the rest of us, glued to the television, to the media, or do you have your inside results coming through? How does it work? Uh, well, what happens is we have scrutineers at each of the booths, as do uh, other candidates, and uh, they ring in to our own tally room. When did you first realise that you were in for a landslide win, which is, in effect, it is what you ended up with? So tell us how that news started to filter through to you. Well, what happened was that what usually happens on the night, and as did uh, on the 26th of March, is that the smaller booth uh, comes in first. Uh, you know, they're obviously counted much quicker than those big booths, say, at uh, Westport. Uh, where there's uh, you know probably three or four thousand votes, uh, I think the first booth that came in was Coopernook at about six fifteen, so not long after the uh, the uh, polls had closed, um, and we we had won that booth, so that was exciting. We were one out of one, uh, and then a number of other smaller booths came in, and after about the seventh or eighth booth, and we'd won every booth uh, at that stage, uh, we could see that things uh, things were looking pretty good. There was uh, momentum. Yeah. yeah, we still thought it was going to be reasonably close, but uh, what happened was then the first uh, larger booth at Port Macquarie Primary School came in and there was a big margin there and we thought wow this is this is really happening now uh, there was there was going to be a big swing you know Leslie in the movies you get um, in movies about elections somebody comes up and whispers in the in the candidates here <laughs> congratulations mr. president did anyone do that to you on the night uh, well, Peter Besling did contact me and say congratulations, and uh, you mm. know I certainly appreciated that he, he took the time to make that phone call. Absolutely. Um, and uh, you know I, I, I take my hat off to him, as I have said previously when we had meet the candidates nights. You know I, I, I sometimes don't think people in the community appreciate what candidates go through. I mean there is only one winner on the night, and you are putting a lot on the line when you put your name out there to stand uh, to represent what you believe in, whether you are uh, you know a, a member of the Labor Party or the National or the Liberals or an Independent and you know particularly Peter he had worked uh, hard for our community and uh, you know I, I believe he was a genuine representative mm. um, but yeah you know people people made that choice and that that's what democracy is about and that's what it's all about let's go back a step to the campaign there are a significant number of people in the electorate who would happily describe the Port Macquarie election campaign as rather grubby uh, because we had the incident with Peter Beslin's bus where it's mm. quite possible that it was sabotaged. There's also the issue of some incredibly negative letterbox drops across Port Macquarie. Mm -hmm. Do you think grubby is a fair description of the campaign here in Port Macquarie? I certainly don't at all. Look, what, what Port Macquarie saw in that campaign was a marginal seat campaign. Uh, you know, this has always been either a safe national seat or a safe independent seat. Uh, for the first time, it was a marginal seat. Now, if you go to any marginal seat across the state uh, out of the 93 electorates, uh, you know, that... That is just normal campaign material. Obviously, my message was that I believed uh, it was important that we had a local member who was a part of the government. But you also need to highlight and make accountable, uh, you know, the person who's been sitting there as the member for whether it's two and a half years or four years. 
I suppose you make a good point there. Maybe it hasn't always been a marginal seat. Mm-hmm. People weren't used to the, the to the tactics, I suppose, that we used in this area mm-hmm. because they were unusual and they were a hot button topic for people around Port Macquarie to talk about. Now I've got a, a cardboard pamphlet here. It's it's printed on fairly expensive photographic paper. I'm, d- I'm going to give it to you to to have a look at. Now, what it depicts is Peter Besling with fellow independent Rob Oakshot. They're having mm-hmm. a glass of beer together. Um, I have to say, it's not particularly a flattering photo of either of the gentlemen. It simply says, vote independent. But then on the flip side of, of the pamphlet, we have Robert Oakeshott standing behind Julia Gillard, another unflattering shot, in my opinion, and it states, get Labor. So, in all, vote independent, get Labor. Now, Leslie, the question that most people have asked me to put to you is what role you played in the negative leaflets that were delivered across Port Macquarie. I mean, did you lay them out? Did you come up with the texts? Did you choose the photos, or did you simply endorse them? Uh, look, um, that the the neg- oh, you know obviously I I had a lot to do with uh, what the messages were about uh, the plans I had for the future because they were about my plans and what I see needed to be the priorities for this electorate in terms of health, uh, education, roads, and so on. Uh, but you know, as um, as a member of a party, we have the opportunity to use uh, people who are expertise in political advertising, in political campaigning. Uh, so yes, that they were the people who uh, designed that. Particular particular flyer. Uh, but let me say that it's based on uh, information that we received from polling from the electorate. Uh, and people were, and whilst I acknowledge that some people weren't happy about that flyer, uh, but remember also that, you know, uh, over 30 per cent of people didn't vote for me either. So I would say that that negativity is reflected from those people. Um, but um, that flyer, we, what we needed to, to remind people of, and people were telling us that you need to remind the people that last time we voted independent, we got Labor. Um, so we're just stating a fact. We voted independent before and we got a Labor government. It's as simple as that. You could put that message across in a different way, though, couldn't you? Because, I mean, that's, that, that pamphlet there, although it's very clever, when I got that in my letterbox, I thought, how <laughs> clever, because you don't know where it's coming from. It's not clear it's a National Party pamphlet. But I also thought it's rather sleazy as well. Well, I guess, as I said, you know, I acknowledge that people would have different uh, opinions about uh, the way that we use campaign material. But as I said, you, you go to any marginal seat across the state and you'll find similar sorts of material. It's about making you, the, the person who has been in that position accountable. Uh, so we, we were just saying, you know, just remember that what happened last time and that by voting independent, you are running the risk of, uh, you know, having another uh, four years of a Labor government in New South Wales. Okay. And, and that was, that is a fact. Fair enough, fair enough. So come the next election, though, there might be similar pamphlets regarding you. So. May- Exactly right, what and you know, around, and and around. yeah, absolutely, mm. and you know, I would expect that someone, you know, as as we have happens in Meet the Candidates nights, you know, people uh, expect me to be accountable for things like those sort of flyers. Happy to stand up and do that, as I would also expect uh, Peter to be accountable for his actions in the last two and a half years. Ugly side of the campaign aside, tell tell us about your priorities now that you are the member. What what are, because as I said before, you've got a lot of things that you want to get on with. Mm-hmm. How have you prioritised them? What do you want to hit the ground running on? Well, quite clearly, uh, you know. For me, one of the real priorities uh, is the expansion of the base hospital. And, you know, it's fantastic that we have a commitment from the federal government of the $110 million. Uh, Well, $14 million of that was uh, from state, but the majority of it came from the federal government. What we need to do now as a state government, and my responsibility as a local member, is to make sure that that expansion to the hospital is delivered effectively, uh, delivered in a timely fashion, um, and, uh, you know, within the budget that's there. Uh, it's certainly well overdue. Uh, what I need to do is to make sure that it, that it happens. The, the other question I'm getting from people on Facebook, particularly younger people, because mm-hmm. they're the people who use Facebook, and we actually get quite a young listenership on this show, is what can a local member do for them? In other words, if they have a concern, how can they access you? You've always said you want to be an accessible local mm-hmm. member, and I'm sure that you're going to try your best to be that type of member. What can people do if they do have a concern? Uh, well, certainly I have had a Facebook page, and uh, so you, you do. Know, that's, you do. That's it's one great. way, of course, that local. I was people... impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, that's one way that certainly younger people can, uh, you know, can contact me. So people can literally leave you a message on Facebook and say, "Hey, I've got this." 
problem or this issue happening and that's something you would follow up uh, on? Why not? Yeah, I've had uh, certainly had people uh, leave messages there and, mm. uh, you know, I've followed them up on that. So that's just uh, one medium that you can use. Obviously, uh, you know, some issues are much more complex. People want to uh, show me correspondence they may have had with uh, ministers in the past. Uh, and so, you know, it, it would mean that we would need to have a face-to-face -face meeting. And I'm excited you have a local member because I can talk to you now. Here on this show, I have banged on for a couple of years now, I think, about getting an ocean pool in Port Macquarie, like ah. they have down in Sydney where I grew up and in Newcastle they have awesome ocean pools. Port Macquarie's ripe for it. What can you do for me, Leslie? Well, well, that's certainly something that uh, we can have a look at. I have to say, Tim, that's the first time someone's raised that with me. Uh, but like you, I... I'm a man with, full of original ideas. Excellent. Um, uh, but I, I grew up with an ocean pool too on Kangaroo Island. I thought it was a fantastic. We used to have our, our swimming carnivals there at school. It's for the elderly and for the young in particular because, yeah. you know, the waves and the beaches and stuff are sometimes a bit wild and woolly. So you get the uh, young people learning to swim in them mm. and they don't have to be affected by chlorine and breathing in fumes. And plus the elderly people can do their laps and stuff like that without having to worry about the waves. That's absolutely right. My mother... 75 years of age and uh, swims in the ocean every single day in the ocean pool mm. uh, with a whole group of uh, elderly people so you know it's a, it's a fantastic venue so we'll put that on the list good oh i've got a commitment from a uh, local <laughs> member to investigate the possibility we've made progress tonight <laughs> really really quickly can you just describe me uh, describe to us what it was like when you went to sydney for the first time you would have met or was it like the first day of kindergarten for you uh, well obviously it's a place that i've visited quite a bit uh, you know i've had uh, a very uh, good working relationship with the shadow ministers in the past and uh, you know really exciting to catch up with all those people that have really campaigned alongside me people like prue goward who I now consider certainly a very close friend and uh, She's great. She's been in the news lately too, hasn't she? She has. Delving and into celebrity topics. <laughs> Well, she's she's a bit of a celebrity herself. She's had a she is, a very yeah. varied career, and uh, mm. but you know, just a wonderful advocate, uh, particularly for women's issues, for the role she's played before in the federal parliament. Mm. So, um, yeah, look, it was great to catch up with them. Also, you know, fantastic to catch up with people like Kevin Anderson, who won the seat of Tamworth off the independent Peter Draper. Kevin campaigned with me in two thousand and seven, uh, so it was his second time around, and you know, just wonderful to, you know, we I, I know back in two thousand and seven you you think wow will we ever actually make it here and and you know to both be there in 2011 it's just uh you know it's just awesome and uh well, yeah, look forward to working with him. It's been a very long road for you, and each campaign you've run has been always... I've always um, found them to be... I don't know, I've admired your courage in all of them. And the last one, you did it with a lot more gusto, I think, than the previous <laughs> two. It was a slightly different campaign we saw, but, I mean, it paid off for you. What can I say? And congratulations, yeah. you really... Thank you. You deserve it, really. Yeah, you Well, yeah, it. I think, uh, you know, as uh, someone said, you know, you really, you, you really demonstrated what determination can do, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, you fought for it, and... And, uh, you know, you deserve it. And uh, look, you know, I, I have to say uh, it's, a, it's an absolute privilege uh, to now be, um, you know, the representative for Port Macquarie uh, and all of the electorate, you know. I think sometimes it's unfortunate we're called the Port Macquarie electorate because, you know, of course it in, entails, uh, encompasses Harrington and the North Shore and, and uh, all of those. areas. Yes, all those places mm. in between. So... Maybe we should think about a change of name. <laughs> Maybe we should. I'm sure you won't forget about those areas, though, Leslie. Not, not at all. Not as long as they've got a polling booth in them anyway, <laughs> I've got to say. Thanks for joining us tonight. Much appreciated. It's a appreciated. pleasure, Tim, and I uh, look forward to another opportunity. Absolutely.